Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stain, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Monday, the 7th of October, 2024, about 6 15 p.m. Central Time. Well, by now, I'm sure that everybody in the United States knows what's going on in the Florida region as we're getting the most powerful hurricane recorded in the Gulf of Mexico in over 20 years. It's still not near land at this point. It's a Cat 5. The winds are already sustaining themselves crazy, and they are gusting over 180 miles an hour. So when this thing comes near land, it'll probably degrade a bit, but I, I think it's a wrap-up that it'll be a 3 or a 4 hurricane. And now the question is, where does it go? Florida's just been taking a beating. The land is soaked. They, uh, with Hurricane Helene, the area that it's going to again has got debris in the streets. These are projectiles. I, I lived in uh, South Beach for a while and Chicago. And I went through one of those hurricanes maybe 15 years ago or so. It scared the living heck out of me. Uh, if you haven't been through one, it's not the sound which sounds like a train. It's when the electricity goes off. It's when you don't have air conditioning, no wa running water. You go outside, it's knee-high water everywhere you look. Things floating around, creatures in the water. If you think that's easy, God bless you. It isn't, and it takes time to heal from it. And that's what they're going to go through, let alone the damage. And I mean, the damage is severe and much of it not covered by insurance. So if you got gorgeous lawns, if you think wind damage covers that, you are sadly mistaken. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, and, and you've got to be careful as to how this all works. So uh, we are just seeing, as you saw with Helene, what it did in the Carolinas. And all most people don't have flood insurance where they need it. You, get, you find that out all the time. And in regions that keep getting hit by these hurricanes, you honestly think you're going to be able to get affordable insurance. You know, the last resort is going to be the states. And I don't know what you get. All right. So we have a lot of data coming out right now, and I'll get to the data, then we'll talk about what today was. In the afternoon today, we got the consumer credit, and the consumer is still borrowing. They're up $8.9 billion, but it's not as high as the 13.5 they were looking for. So let's applaud it. It's less. The National Federation of Independent Business will come out with their business uh, optimism index tomorrow at 5 in the morning. Market generally doesn't move a lot on that index. Trade balance data will come out, and that'll be released uh, tomorrow at 7.30 a.m., along with the Red Book Group for their weekly retail sales, which have been going up about 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half percent week over week. Atlanta Fed President Bostic will speak at 11.45 to a luncheon group. And we'll get the API numbers 330. But the market's really waiting on CPI a little later, PPI, and the other reports that are forthcoming, and more and more Fed speakers coming out. Because the big question that the market is fighting with right now has to do with what the heck happened with labor. Because when we saw that jobs report come out, in addition to the jolts went up, ADP's numbers went up, people hiring, and then 200 and what, near 50 some odd thousand new jobs, it blew the top off of strategies that were in place. People were looking for a soft landing. Well, you may not get any landing now. You know, there's, a, there's people like me out there arguing already, why do we need to cut in November if the next set of reports come in similar. I, I didn't say super strong, I said similar. All right, if you don't show real declines in the need to make a cut, what are you cutting for? To create inflation again? So that's gonna be an argument. The market is still pricing in a 25 basis point cut in November and December. 13% probability of no cut in November as of today. Remember, this was a market five days ago that was highly probable, over 50%, that we're going to get a 50 basis point cut. And I'm still questioning, do you need one at all? So you're hearing that talk. On the energies, you're soaring. The market is waiting to see if Israel does anything to strike back at Iran. And the market keeps galloping higher. This, to me, is not demand yet that's real. This is on the come, and this is always the hardest thing to play. 
while China's making inroads and tomorrow we're supposed to get a series of reports out of China that say another level of stimulus they're going to offer, you've got to get the consumer to believe it so that you actually get the orders for the goods. I believe this is all what you call war premium being built in and nobody quite cert is certain what's going to happen. The U.S. is trying to press hard on Israel not to hit the nuclear sites. I don't know if they can or can't. I don't know what they have in place uh, that can do it or not do it. I have no privilege to that. And not to hit the oil. Well, the oil is the logical thing to hit because it's easy. Easier than the nuclear sites might be the, the real word. And OPEC is waiting in the wings. They can increase production to make up for a lot. In addition, today Libya announced that they're back to a million barrels a day. That's a big number for Libya. And it happens swiftly. So they've come back online. You're not backing off because when you lose the amount of oil that, Russia, that Iran is putting out on the market, the market's nervous about that. That's the reality of the situation. The dollar finished today holding on to the gains that it had. You've been a little bit all over the board in the other uh, different uh, currencies. You've down under the 131 level in the pound, but there is support in the market uh, just under this level. That doesn't mean it's bullish, but that's where some support should come in. In the stock market, you got beaten up pretty good today. Now, here's what people have to understand. We're going to transition this market ultra fast from a market just waiting for the Fed to have the markets back only, which it will. Whether the Fed cuts right now or it cuts in December, come up, it doesn't matter. They're going to keep doing what they have to to get to a neutral interest rate, which are not hikes. They're a series of cuts, just not maybe as deep as we thought. What the market's going to pay a lot of attention to are earnings now. And the earnings season kicks off in the stock market on Friday. It's always with the big banks first. We'll see where that goes and what the forward guidance is, not just of them, but the whole earnings season one more time again. The market is anticipating that we're going to see strong earnings as an overall number. Not every company will reach, obviously. But if that's the case and you have the market coming down, then this break in the market fits in with what I have been telling you, that the market often makes a break low around October 10th, then puts on that lolly dolly it does uh, for the election. I should cover that again. I'll try to cover that uh, soon in one of these reports. I did it for you once and I'll do it again. So as so we take a look at the S&P, you're down almost 1% starting off the week of all day Monday, well Sunday and through Monday, and now tonight's early couple of hour trade. We've been open about two hours. We're down just shy of a percent. You can see how the market is stepping back a little bit right here. The pattern of the market is one of lower highs and lower lows on the swing line. I always look at that because trends develop with the swing line. So the pattern is down unless and until you take out today's high. You had an outside day down. Take out the high of an outside day within two trading sessions is my rule, and the market often rallies to certain numbers. Well, with it breaking down, one of the numbers I've been looking for is the 18-day average. You have heard me preach it over and over. You hit it back here barely, but then you kept hitting it, and you're fighting your battle there. So you have the trend down, the market's fighting for direction, a close under the 18-day average puts the bias down. Where you look for resistance on rallies is the upper Bollinger Band, the black line, 58.36.40. Support, the combination first of 56.77.70, not far down from the lower Bollinger Band to the 100-day average of 5,600. When you add momentum, when you lost the bullish momentum right here, that ended this run. And I kept saying here that I think we'll get back to the 18-day average. Now's where the game starts. So this is nice. It's tidy. We will see what you do. As you, as you know, I am looking for ways ultimately that I think the market's going to find the bottom. And that's because historically you've got the, uh, the Fed backing. You've got earnings coming on you. You have a year-end rally that you often get. I can go on and on with the stories, and I happen to think corporations are doing well. 
Uh, you know, look at everybody working. Why wouldn't things be being bought? I'll talk in my spider ETF where the, uh, where the problem is with earnings because so many people are expecting so much out of AI and the timing for that is all, all wrong. This is the spending cycle to get to that point where the payback comes. It will not be now. This is the pay cycle and I don't think people understand that except for guys like NVIDIA which are manufacturing the chips that you have to have to get to that, your machinery to work and your software to work. Well, lower highs, lower lows. I look for big support here at 19,762 to 589, but the battleground's right here at the 18-day average, just the way you are in the S&P. The Dow, a higher high and a lower low, and the battleground's the 18-day average, momentum down. I don't look for the market to collapse much under the 41,851 level initially. Would have to get some piece of news that I don't see to do that. And in the Russell, it's more of a drifting down here, oversold already. Uh, I see the support 2190 to 2160. No reason to be long, but if you get over, the high of Friday, that gets interesting all of a sudden. The market might be saying no more downside left in it. Doesn't mean there's upside. Then we get to the bonds and notes, and as I said, I thought we could drop back into a potential area of the 100-day average if it just collapsed, and we're doing that. So you're there already. You have a market. Is it embedding? Yes. So you're getting both numbers under this today. You can't count tonight. But you're down so far, it's going to matter. You've got both numbers under 20. You have both numbers under 20 on Friday. And the day before, on Thursday, let me get to that, you were at 20.02. You weren't under. So tomorrow's the key day to embed in that particular market. And you can see what you're doing. In the five-year note, it's a similar game. And I look for the market to find its footing right in these areas. Now, have we added back yields? You can count on it. Are the people in the fixed income going to come out and tell their clients, hey, between four and four and a half percent, because the Fed has got the markets back, this is probably a good spot to lock in yield, because if yield falls, you'll make money on your notes or bonds, whatever you're buying. As they pop, you can decide what to do while you're getting that yield. That's the story I heard all day long on CNBC and Bloomberg. It was interesting as can be. Then we come to the dollar index, which has had a one-way street to the upside. And this is a market that just left its bear trend and gave nobody a chance. It was just gone. It didn't trend. It was a spin to the upside. I look for this market to between right here See the gray line, 102.94, 102.76, and current prices to have its resistance point and have trouble at those numbers. When we come to the euro, you're down into where I thought the support would come. On Friday, you fell down into the 100-day, the 200-day uh, average, and the Bollinger Band. You haven't been able to progress from there. I think the smart money that is short is covering at this point. In the British pound, it's between here and the Bollinger Band, you're oversold. So I, to, I expect to see some short covering. Short covering is not saying the market's turning bullish. Short covering is just short covering. This market's had its decline. I personally was telling clients against the 132.80 to 133 level, I thought the market would have resistance. And now I'm seeing the market down to this area. But if you're a hedger, what do you care? You've locked in your value. If, uh, if you're a speculator, it's very different. When we come over to the Bitcoin, higher high, lower low, and the market flipped on you. Remember, it was trying to find support at the 100-day average up to the Bollinger Band. And that's generally not a good sign. When you lost the embedded reading, when the red line right here got under 79, that's it. Think of, you know, you got your bathtub full. I haven't taken a bath. I take showers. I do, I do occasionally wash. But you pull it and that, the swirl happens. Well, this is what happened right through there. 
it's almost the reverse in the dollar. You know, somebody pulled the plug and the bears got sucked in and the bull took off, all right? It's just what happened. The market got caught off guard. I don't know any analysts that were looking for the jobs report to come in that strong and unemployment to fall to 4.1%. There could easily be revisions or there could easily be none. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but the market, you got money at risk, the market takes off, especially currencies. They're a worldwide market. Bingo, big problem. I'm going to repeat what I'm saying on the energies. It'd be one thing if this were demand-driven. This is spec-driven, in my opinion. You, you've taken prices in one, two, three, four, five, six days. You've gone from the 70 level, and you've gone up 14, 15%. This isn't demand-driven. This isn't an outage of oil. This is the expectation of that. Be careful. When the event happens, if, if it happens, of Israel striking back at Iran, you could make a top on that event because you're up so much. It depends what the damage is. Uh, gasoline, same identical thing. It's not like people are lined up across the United States to buy gasoline. They certainly are in Florida. Uh, I know that I have family on the run out of the Naples area, and they're, they're going inland right now. Uh, smart move. It doesn't matter if your city gets missed. It's a smart move because you never know where that storm's going. And 9-foot, 15-foot uh, surges, you can't survive that if you're on a coast. Heating oil. All the way coming up here, market battling at the 100-day average. And then that gas. Have I not been telling you that I thought this could end up being a top? I've been prepping you, prepping you. I might do a special report on it. I'm thinking tomorrow that I might do my shooting. We're doing a piece of new software that we want to get done. Uh, and we might be able to have it in a day or so. And if we can, that's when I'll do the report. So you put this all together, it's an interesting time. But what you're getting a lot of outside days. Do you know how to use them? Do you even know what they are and what they mean? Because you see them on your charts all the time. To me, they're way more important than people get them credit for. They're either a, a trend might fail or continue. If it's a continuation pattern, I show you what that means and what the chart has to do for it. And if it's a fail pattern, the same thing. Nine video chapters, the software you see me using right here. And then I want to give you access to my morning research and the videos so that you can see them develop and I walk you through them. Sure, there's examples galore in what I do here, but showing it in real time, I think that's all important. The value of the course in the software, that just the value of my subscription where I do my morning subscriber videos and the charting software, if you buy them from us, they cost more than the course everything's included. It's not expensive, all right? I want to make that ultra clear. Not expensive, it's going to stick with you. How long will it take you to master it? I don't know, two days, three days? That's about it. You, you'll get it down. Mastering it, well, you got to apply it, then you can master it. It's like everything else, this is meant to be applied. So irapstein.com under courses, remove your cursor to the top. I'm Ira, I'll catch up with you all tomorrow.